Jordan Chariton um, has an outlet called Status Coup, and um, he does a lot of journalism, a lot of you know investigative reporting. He actually goes on the ground to cover important stories. As a small operation, I think they do a significantly better job than every mainstream media outlet in the country combined. So um, one of the things he did recently is he took to the streets to talk to people who are now homeless, who lost their homes as a result of, you know, what's happening with COVID and what happened with the economy as a result of COVID. Uh, one of the places he stopped was Louisville, Kentucky. And he's going to talk to somebody who's on the field dealing directly with this issue of homelessness. And there's a little bit of bombshell news here that really slipped under everybody's radar. Um, and it exposes effectively the fraud that are the protections and the help that was supposed to be coming for people who are struggling during this economic downturn and this depression. Take a look. The loopholes are so large that landlords were still able to evict based on a number of reasons. And so while landlords could not evict uh, ostensibly uh, for non-payment of rent, they could evict for all sorts of other reasons. Mm -hmm. And so what we found is a situation where capital was still moving in neighborhoods. Uh, we had massive bailout bailouts for landlords. We had deferred mortgages. And so while capital was still moving, incomes were stalled or, or stagnant. And so it created the situation where a lot of landlords are now sitting on uh, large reserves of capital and they want, they want to remodel their units. In order to remodel their units, they are participating in mass evictions. And so they're evicting their entire buildings so they can rehab those units and rent them for high, higher rents once COVID is over. Mm -hmm. And so what we found is while you know evictions decreased, we still had about 10% of the evictions that normally occur. So, few, uh, multiple things here. Number one, that's just the evictions that we know about in Louisville. He said 10%. They could not, I mean, they were fighting just to get the data from eviction courts and city government. It could be more than 10%. But even let's say 10%, that's potentially thousands of people that were evicted in Louisville during the pandemic. It, he didn't say it in that clip, including in January and February, which is, freezing temperatures uh, in Louisville. So again, we call it the other pandemic, Steve. Where is the reporting outrage on A, where is the billions of dollars that was supposed to go towards rental relief, but landlords turned to landlords who, by the way, are with property management companies who buy off city government, uh, i.e. gentrification. Where is that money? And Excuse me. Isn't it kind of scandalous that all we have heard from the federal uh, government and by their accomplices in the media is, you know, we've been protecting tenants during this moratorium, ev eviction moratorium. Hey, we're not actually going to look into the details that this thing is flakier than Frosty Flakes. So that's incredible. Uh, let me break this down a little bit further for you or just explain what's going on here. Um, what the expert on the ground dealing with this issue is saying is that. Sure, there's technically an eviction moratorium, but the eviction moratorium um, is only on the issue of non-payment of rent. They could still evict for other reasons. So there's a giant loophole, and they can still evict. And so they go on to explain they're still evicting about 10% of the people um, that they were compared to before the pandemic. And as Jordan points out, that's potentially thousands of people. That's thousands of people. And he, you know, this is, he's looking particularly in Louisville and, and this is the result there. Um, this is probably happening in a bunch of places all over the country. And so the other scandal is, as that expert explained on the ground, landlords would get bailout money and then they would turn around and mass evict anyway. And then they would try to update their properties to rent it out for higher prices. So do you understand that? They were given bailout money nominally to allow people to stay in their homes, right? So don't evict them. Here's bailout money. But they would take the bailout money, use a loophole to evict people anyway, and then what they would do is update their property so they can then um, rent out those same places for more money. That's 
absolutely astonishing. Astonishing. And Jordan is the one who's on the ground figuring all this stuff out. He doesn't have a massive budget like CNN or MSNBC or Fox News or even, you know, New York Times, Washington Post, whoever, fill in the blank. He's a guy with a YouTube channel, very much like me, except I'm just a political pundit and commentator. He's somebody who's actually doing real reporting. So he's right. Nobody's talking about this. Why is nobody talking about this? This is a huge deal. Billions was allocated to this. And by the way, he goes on to say hundreds of millions of dollars are just flat out missing. Missing. And it seems like, uh, you know, listen, similar thing happened with what? The war in Afghanistan and the war in Iraq where when they audited it and tried to see what was going on, there's an insane amount of money missing. Insane amount. I mean, this is just people skimming it off the top for sure. So-called defense contractors, the military industrial complex. What is going on here? And people are getting screwed. It's regular people who are getting screwed. And by the way, I recommend everybody go check out his YouTube channel, Status Coup, because he has videos interviewing some of these people who were evicted. And they tell their stories, and their stories are insane. Because their stories are very often like, you know, hey, I did the thing I was supposed to do, and then they hit me with a mountain of paperwork, and I tried to do the paperwork, and I submitted it, and it didn't get through, and then I was evicted anyway, and, you know, I have health problems, I was evicted in the middle of the pandemic, so on and so forth. This stuff is happening all over the country, and guess what, guys? It's about to get a hell of a lot worse, because the moratorium eviction eventually is going to be gone. Or, excuse me, the eviction moratorium is soon going to be gone. And... When it's fully gone, oh my god, if they actually follow through, there could be a crisis the likes of which this country hasn't seen since the Great Depression. Because remember, I remember covering the numbers from early on in the pandemic, two or three months into the pandemic. Like, 30% of people couldn't pay their bills. 30% couldn't make their rent. Or, you know, uh, pay their mortgage. 30%. Think about how many people that is, man. 30%. So, this, and that's why he said, this is why we call it the other pandemic. The pandemic that nobody's really talking about. Man, your government has screwed you royally. And it's a bureaucratic nightmare, and you got greedy landlords, and really no checks and balances and regulations on this to make sure that the money's getting to where it's supposed to go, and no leadership, and it's a giant clusterfuck, man. And people are getting absolutely screwed in the process. I mean, listen, the simplest thing that could have been done was if at the peak of the pandemic they decided, UBI. We're just going to do UBI. $1,000 or $2,000 a month, every month to people. And so it's like a social security check for everybody. And that would have given people enough wiggle room where most of them could have paid their bills. Could have made rent. Uh, but of course, what do they do? Usually, anytime they do bailouts, our corrupt government does top-down bailouts. You know, when 2008 happened with the subprime mortgage crisis and the Great Recession, they rushed in and bailed out the same companies and executives that crashed the economy and ruined their own companies. And then those executives got bonuses, even though they failed at their jobs objectively. So why are you doing top-down bailouts? If you're going to do bailouts, bottom-up is the way to do a bailout, but only a non-corrupt government would do a bottom-up bailout, a bailout of the people. So anyway, massive credit here to Jordan Chariot and everybody subscribe to his channel. He's doing real journalism, real reporting, and this is super duper duper important. And again, nobody's talking about it and everybody should be talking about it.